300 days of sunshine, some of the most incredible food of the Mediterranean and spectacular coastlines. This is your sign to come to Malta. I've packed my swimming trunks and I've caught a ferry to Gozo, a small island that forms part of the Maltese archipelago. Known for its pristine beaches, dramatic cliffs and rolling hills dotted with vineyards and olive groves. It offers a much slower pace of life, and I'm told the locals are extremely friendly and laid back. First up is a trip to one of the local salt pans. The salt pans hold a significant historical and cultural value. They've been utilized for salt production for centuries. And as you can see, I am surrounded by beautiful salt pans overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. And these salt pans have been looked after by the same family for the last 160 years. It would be rude not to try some. Come on, let's go. Miss like Cheney, how are you? <laughs> Lovely to good. meet you. You're good. <laughs> when we are here, good. We are good. When you have this view, when you have this view. This is amazing. How long, how long have you been harvesting salt here? 64 years. Wow. Come here, harvest salt. It's five generations. So this is the best quality it's stuff salt, in Malta. So yes. This is the real deal. This is the salt crystal from, from the salt flats yes. here. Yes. Wow. It's really pure. Yes. Wow. It's a natural salt. Thank you so much for having us here and seeing Thank what you do. You. It's incredible. Oh. A piece of history in Gozo. Oh. Give us a hug. Oh, thank you so much. Right, time for a dip. And this next stop is a place I've seen on Instagram. Now, if you're looking for the most amazing swim in Gozo, look no further than the Blue Hole, a picturesque little swimming spot that is famous for having barracuda, colorful fish, and even octopus. I think I'm gonna need these. Let's go. The Blue Hole is a natural wonder. The vibrant blue waters surrounding the hole are a result of the interplay between sunlight and the pristine marine ecosystem just beneath the surface. This is beautiful, pristine waters. I'm glad I brought the mask because there's loads of fish down here. Right, time to eat. Talfanar, a traditional bakery in Gozo, has been satisfying the cravings of customers for over a century. I've come to try my hand at making a traditional Maltese bread called Eftira, with a little bit of help from the restaurant's owner, Hannah. What a fabulous bakery this is, and the heat from the oven. I can tell yeah. you make some beautiful things here. Yes, yes, it's quite, quite warm, isn't it's it? It's quite warm, yeah. but I mean, what, <laughs> what is the classic dish that you bake here? So today we'll be making the traditional Gozo Eftira, which has um, the maize made out of the traditional um, mother dough, okay. and uh, we'll be making it with lots of fresh ingredients. I'm going to follow your lead. Yes, you tell me what no to problem. do. No <laughs> problem. So first things first, flour. Yeah, flour. Otherwise, it'll get stuck. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to massage it like a little baby. A little baby's <laughs> bottom. Love. It. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. We're going to transfer it onto the tin. Okay. And this so, is slightly oil. Yes. Okay. And traditionally, this would be. Sometimes served as a sandwich, right? Yes, this is kind of like a more uh, Gossetin style. Okay. Now, you like capers and olives? Oh, I do love capers and olives. Tomatoes for a bit of colour and freshness. So this bakery is 130 years old. Mm -hmm. My great-grandfather built it. Wow. And uh, so I'm the fourth generation here. So you're keeping the legacy alive. Yes, we're trying to. <laughs> you're doing a beautiful as job. As much as we can. Wonderful, wonderful. Next, we had some garlic and parsley. Now comes the fun part before the potatoes. Okay. You get two pieces like this, yeah. see, and like this. Okay, like that? Yes, okay. that's it. And finally, some sliced potatoes and olive oil. You've done this before. Uh, I've had a, had a bit of practice, <laughs> just never an Eftira. <laughs> I make some very dodgy pizzas when I've had a little drink <laughs> at home. <laughs> My wife bans me from doing uh, outdoor pizza over night. Uh -huh. <laughs> Love. Oh. This is going to be absolutely gorgeous. So straight into a hot oven, how long is it going to take to cook? It takes about um, 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. And now we'll just have to put it inside. Let's do it, let's do it. Are you ready? Straight ahead. Straight ahead. Yes, perfect. Don't look back. I mean, look at that. Not bad for a first time, right? Yes, well done. <laughs> and after 20 minutes, it's ready to serve. Wow, look at this. So the ftira is ready. Fresh from the oven. Yes. Wow, look at that. Enjoy. Thank you so Welcome. much, Anna. Cheers.
Now, after all that hard work, just have a look at that. And we have a Maltese delicacy. Let's give it a go. It's such an interesting mix of ingredients. But that bread dough in that hot wood-fired oven just brings it to life. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yum. After a fantastic day in Gozo, I've come back to Valletta for a quick drink before I head to bed. When the sun sets over Valletta, the city is transformed. It's lit up, it's magical, and it's totally beautiful. The perfect time to grab a drink and soak up the atmosphere. Cheers. This is Janaina Bay. It's a little quieter than most beaches in Malta, but it's a hidden gem, and it's the perfect place to explore the beautiful clay cliffs. And, uh, Perfect place to go for a little paddle. Now, I've always been partial to a bit of kayaking, and these two lads have promised me something fairly spectacular on the other side of the bay. So what do you think? We're going to go to the left here? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah. As you paddle along the crystal clear waters, you'll be mesmerized by the intricate formations of limestone that have been carved by centuries of waves. The journey takes you through narrow passages, revealing hidden grottos and secluded chambers, each one with its own unique charm. Back on dry land, and it's time to sample some local fish. Now this is what it's all about. Sea breeze, sunshine, a glass of wine, and a traditional Maltese seafood soup. It doesn't get better than this. Saha. Now, I am told that the one place you have to visit when you come to Malta is the Blue Grotto. It boasts crystal clear blue waters, and I'm headed out on a boat to check it out. Located on the southern coast of Malta, near the village of Zureg, the Blue Grotto is a series of sea caves carved into the limestone cliffs. The caves are famous for their crystal clear azure waters, which reflect the sunlight and create a brilliant blue hue. The colours and patterns created by the interplay of light and water are truly mesmerising. The colour of this water is unbelievable. I have never been in a cave this big. Stunning. It's my last evening in Malta, and I've come back to walk through the ancient city of Emdina as the sun sets, and I've got the chance to reflect on the past few days. I've loved exploring the rich historical sites and the stunning landscapes. The local street food and cafes are fantastic and the fresh seafood has left me craving for more. However, what truly made this trip special was the warm and welcoming nature of the locals who made me feel at home from the minute I arrived. Malta is a destination that truly has it all. What a way to finish the most magic trip. Sunset, glass of wine, Saha. <laughs> <laughs>